Oh my goodness, I think we got this, everybody. We got the win here. Yes! We take a little bit of point of damage. That's fine. We got it right here, everybody. Approach of the second sign. And we beat our opponent here. Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the latest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, we're going to be playing perhaps my most hated deck of all. We're basically going to be playing one of the most disliked types of archetypes in all of magic. This is Turbo Fog, or as I like to call it, Can't touch this. But as always, let's go over the stats of the deck first. We basically are going to be running a Bant set of colors, so we're going to be playing white, blue, and green. We have no creatures in the deck, and we have 38 non-creature spells. To be specific, however, that's going to be 18 instants, 6 sorceries, 4 artifacts, 5 enchantments, 5 planeswalkers, and 22 lands. Now the question you're probably asking yourself right now is, Inferno Man, why would you play a deck that you absolutely hate? Good question! Well, to be perfectly honest with you, it's actually pretty budget friendly, so those of you out there who like making your opponent feel miserable, this deck tech is for you. But in any case, let's go ahead and explain to you, those of you who are unaware, what the heck a Turbo Fog deck is, and explain how we get to victory with this. We're basically going to try to then utilize cards such as Root Snare. We're going to play Haze of Pollen, and we're going to play Teferi's Protection, even though we're on a budget. And then also the One Ring. These cards alone prevent our opponent from doing combat damage to our face. So with them, we can prevent our damage from going through until we get through our game-winning piece, Approach of the Second Sun. So let's actually talk about this card briefly for a second here. Approach of the Second Sun is a 7-mana sorcery in white that says, If this spell was cast from your hand and you've cast another spell named Approach of the Second Sun this game, you win the game. Otherwise, put Approach of the Second Sun into its owner's library, 7th from the top, and you gain 7 life. So, simply put, this kind of helps stall us out. We have to cast 2 of these in one game and get an instant victory from that. But how do we get there with Approach of the Second Sun in our deck? We only have 2 copies, just to make sure at least we can get 1 out in some way, shape, or form. Well, obviously, this is where the Turbo Fog effect comes into play. Basically, we have to stall out our opponent from doing combat damage to our face, and ensure until we get to our Approach of the Second Sun, that's how we get to victory. Very simply put, we're going to then utilize copies of Root Snare and Haze of Pollen. Both of these cards do the exact same thing. They prevent combat damage that will be dealt this turn, and also that does mean any combat damage that does to either us or any other things such as creatures or planeswalkers will not take effect. So if we don't need to fog anything, Haze of Pollen also is capable of cycling, which is pretty sweet for us. We also have a much more upgraded version of that same effect in Teferi's Protection. Teferi's Protection is a 3 mana instant that reads, until your next turn, your life total can't change and you gain protection from everything. All permits you can control phase out and then you exile to fairy's protection this is of course done to make sure you, you don't abuse this card but simply put to fairy's protection is a very beefy and upgraded version of root snare and haze of pollen it gives us basically a whole turn to stall out and make sure that everything that we have on board just isn't affected for another turn giving us another chance of hoping to get closer to victory obviously i'm not going to talk about the one ring but this card of course is essential to the deck even on a budget it's still incredibly powerful gives us protection from everything for a single turn and also helps us draw some cards at the cost of some life now speaking of losing life we also have another card in here that it's also being added in the wanderer it basically prevents all non combat damage that will be dealt to us and other permanents we control in other words this can turn off burn effects and along with our fog effects we can't take any damage for a little while the other sweet thing about the wanderer is if you have to take it down you can exile a target creature with power four or greater so this can get rid of some of the bigger heavy hitters if we have to in a pinch as far as how we get to our approach as the second sun this is where things get also fun and interesting although it may be a little bit boring and annoying to then just stall out your opponent with fog effects we also have a light ramp package and growth spiral we also have some modal lands with ball again recovery and we also have saloon divisions these cards can help us also dig out copies of our approach to second sun if they get thrown into the graveyard or if we need to dig for that extra copy immediately on the next turn we can then utilize that to help hopefully speed up the clock other ways of helping us get to victory we also have a copies of narset partner veils i know this card of course is also one of those cards that's loved or hated but it also is incredibly powerful for us and very essential to the deck slows down our opponent from utilizing their copies of the one ring but also ensures that we can dig for our copies of approach the second sun we have a single copy of union of the third path that just mostly helps us stabilize it helps us draw some cards and also gains life equal to the number of cards in hand so ideally time the single copy with the one ring and we can regain a ton of life and then ensure that we can just keep our combo and also stall effects going now as far as our removal package we also have some light removal and ossification it'll be able to take out an annoying creature or planeswalker that's on the battlefield that we just can't deal with and then hopefully we can just stall out some more until we get to the approach of the second sun as far as the land base is concerned very simple and easy 
plains, islands, forests, and again, you're going to use all the gain lands because we are in a budget deck, but also the life gain is essential to make sure we can off balance the one rings effects against us. Now, as far as your sideboard is concerned, what you're basically looking at is copies of Tormod's Crypt as your Graveyard Hate. If you need some more counter spells against control decks, you have Dovin's Veto. If you, again, you also are encountering com combo decks out there or decks that are utilizing a ton of artifacts or enchantments, use your filter outs to bounce away everything. It doesn't really hurt us that much, but also what's sweet about this is the filter outs can bounce away our Wanderer and the One Ring, so we can reset them and reutilize them later on. If we do need to beat our opponent via combat, we have Ominous Seas, and we also have copies of this Colossal Sky Turtle as a great flying protection creature with ward 2 but also a colossal sky turtle in particular also has the channel abilities so we can utilize this similar to a balaged recovery with one of its abilities or you can even use it with its channel to bounce away a creature that you can't deal with so it's actually pretty sweet i like turtles another alternate win con that we can use is we can also bring in teferi's tutelage to mill out our opponent and hopefully get to victory ideally you could put these actually in the main deck but we only sleep put them into the sideboard because there are a lot of dredge style decks out there that abuse great graveyard shenanigans so that's why you only want to sideboard these in when you absolutely have to if you need a little bit more removal the only other option we'll have is vanish into eternity which can exile a non-land permanent as long as it is not a creature but if you have to cast it on a creature it is going to be very expensive but also it works in a pinch how do you all feel about turbo fog are you thinking that this deck is actually still capable of doing stuff despite everything that's been added to historic well Again, I don't like playing this deck, but we're going to give it a try. We got to be fair when we play these decks. Let's give it a shot and see how well it performs. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Okay, my favorite friends, here we go. We are playing our Turbo Fog deck here, i.e. touch this in the historic format. And I think we can kind of keep this. It's a little slow. But we do have copies of the One Ring to help draw through our deck. We do have at least one Fog effect and a way of getting rid of bigger threats while digging with Narset. I know, I know, I know. It's very slow, but I think we can get there with this. Our opponent is playing Jingatha, so that could be... Okay, what is it? Is it Wizards? It is. Well, can we beat the Wizard deck? Thankfully, Root Snares can protect us from that, and the Wanderer can protect us from the burn. All we just need to do is just get enough mana, and we should be able to at least outdo our opponent here. Maybe. All right, Den of the Bugbear. Symmetry Sage again. Soul Spar Mage. All right, well, they're building up their Horde Presence, which is actually okay against us. Ooh, we got our approach at the second sun. The prize tool that can help us later. Well, this is going to be great for us a little bit later on. But, however, we still need to build up our lands. So we just need to stall for time. Hopefully, we can draw into some more action here. Another land. Balmore. Okay. Well, the Onslaught's going to be coming up any time now. We just need to sponge a hit or two. And if we just came in with some non-tap lands, the Root Snare action right here would be absolutely perfect. Wow, we really cannot afford to take any additional hits at this point, but we're going to try to find a way through. Pass here. All we just need at this point is just a way to stall out. That's all we need. Static Discharge. Down to four. Yikes. Opponent swinging here. Hey, touch this. Root Snare. Whew, that was way too close. Okay. If our opponent has run out of action, we actually can stall out for a little while longer here. Okay, that's good. They, they have now no other spells in hand, so this does now buy us some time. So with that, we play the one ring. We get protection for a turn. We're going to have to be very careful here, though, because, again, we don't have that much in terms of life gain. No swings from our opponent because they can't do damage. This is actually pretty awesome for us. If we could just get at least a couple more fogs, we should be in business. Down to three. Ooh, okay. Well, our deck is definitely kind of messing with us right now. We have copies of the one ring to kind of protect ourselves, but it's not going to help us for that much longer. So with that, play a copy of the one ring. Okay, so that's where our lands are. Well, that's good. One ring again. Turning off the old one. We're not going to tap yet. We have to wait a little bit because we can't afford to lose any more life. We have to survive just a little bit longer. This might be it for us. If our opponent finds a burn spell, we are screwed. We can just get one fog effect. We might be okay. Come on, opponent. Do not find a burn spell. That's all I ask. Ah, let's 
transliteration again. That's greedy, opponents. Okay. Well, that's fine. They could do that. They're just going to miss out on a ton of damage here that they could take. Spire Bluff Canal. No swings, obviously, because we're protected. Do we get greedy ourselves here? We could do that with the one ring. Okay. I think we're going to have to just play it very safe at this point. Ooh, okay. We got a Roots here. That, that helps us out a ton. All right. Island. We can... How do we do this? Okay. The Wanderer. So, whew, at the very least, this is exactly why I brought it in, everybody. So the non-combat damage with burn spells, i.e. now can't hurt us for a little bit. Or at least they have to redirect them to the Wanderer. So that buys us some time. Another tap land for our opponent. All we just need to do is just get enough to approach it the second sun. And we could hopefully pull this off. Reckless charge. That's fine, actually. That I don't mind. Opponent here also just trying to see if how aggro they can go. They're swinging at the Wanderer. Which is perfect anyway for us. Okay. Woo! <laughs> we survived just a little bit here. Okay. We got there, everybody. So with that, can't touch this. nothing takes damage. Wow. We are literally living on the edge here, everybody. Okay. So do we try to do this here? I think we're going to have to. Draw a card. We got another root snare, which is awesome. Ooh, man. Okay, so with this now, draw some more cards, and we will reset right now everything. Play the one ring. New one stays on. Protection from everything again. Wow, we are just living by the skin of our teeth here, everybody. <laughs> Can't believe we're actually pulling this off versus this deck. The fact that Wizards does not play counter spells in the main deck is actually what's saving us right now from dying here. Okay, so, wow, our opponent actually didn't want to do anything. That's fine, actually. So, we now are unprotected again for a little bit. A little scary, but I think we should be okay here. Okay, with that, we will play Ossification on the Plains. We shut off Balmore. Whew, okay, so... Opponent, are you there? Have they given up? Well, it shouldn't be exciting for that yes yet. I want to see if our opponent actually can try to pull this off. This is actually pretty, pretty interesting and tight match here. Soka's in. They make some tokens. Ideally, what we want to do at this point is we need at least enough mana so we can cast Approach to the Second Sun and keep a Root Snare up. So we need nine mana. That's a lot to pull out, but we can do it, everybody. We currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're almost there. They go swinging. We will use the Fallen now. Can't touch this. To turn off all that damage. Okay. Whew. Survived at least a little bit longer, everybody. No damage. Throw Spiral. Draw a card. Tranquil Coat coming in. Gain a life. In this matchup, every bit of life does make a difference here. So never underestimate the power of tap life gain lands okay if we can just get at this point one two three four five six seven if we can just get at least one more land we should be okay here okay so how do we do this everybody how do we do this okay so with that i think we're gonna have to try getting something with the one ring okay got a life gain land which is great that sets us up for a turn we will play the one ring. Keep the new one ring. We now have protection from everything for a turn. Wow. I don't know how much more longer we can hold out everybody, but we are hanging in there. I'm actually surprised our opponent has not gained any of their burn damage yet. Ooh, wow. They're turning on Dunn of the Bugbear. That's kind of risky. Wait. They... But they can't do anything, really, because we have protection still. But that's okay. We have another Root Snare to get through. Can't touch this. Oh. What happened there? <laughs> okay, that's fine. So, no damage to anything. We need to take advantage of every little piece of life we have left. We just need to survive a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. Another growth spiral. We'll just use it now. Maybe we can hit the land? Maybe? Ooh, we got Teferi's protection. That's even better for us. Okay. So... Here's how we do this, everybody. Wait, hold on. We need a way 
to get to another fog. So, Narset. This is getting really close here, but we can do this. Perfect. Okay, that's even better. We are so close to victory here, everybody. Time to go swinging. It's a fairy's protection. Do you have another answer, opponent? Wow, wizard's lightning. Okay. That pumps up everything. Puts it down to two. Play with fire. Ooh, okay. I see what they're trying to do here. This is where it's going to be critical, everybody. Fairy's protection again. I didn't want to do it this way, but we didn't really have a choice. Woo! That was too close, everybody. So, we take no damage here. Lose no life. Wow. Very frighteningly close, everybody. Down to two here. Ooh, okay, so we got at least another approach of the second sun in hand, which is great. So with that, we will play approach of the second sun. Woo! Back up to nine life. Okay. Let's see. Wait, this doesn't have a shuffle, does it? Okay, that's actually pretty good. Just the trick for this. We will get Union of the Third. And okay. All we just have to do here is stabilize for a turn, and we got there, everybody. Den of the Bugbear again. Wow, this has actually been a really good match so far. I didn't think this was going to take this long. But I'm actually having fun right now with this game. Opponent swinging at Den of the Bugbear. Well, might as well use it now. Aza Pollen. Hey, touch this. Protect ourselves. No damage getting through. Oh my goodness, I think we got this, everybody. We got the win here. Yes! We take a little bit of point of damage. That's fine. We got it right here, everybody. Approach of the second sign. And we beat our opponent here. We beat the toughest, best deck in the format. Wow. I couldn't believe we actually pulled that off. Yes. Oh, we beat out Is it Wizards again. The best deck in the format. Beautiful. And there you have it, everybody. So that was our Turbo Fog deck, i.e. touch this. In the historic format. And tell me in the comments below, what do you think? Yes, I know what you're thinking. First off, it was only one match, but oh man, did you not see how amazing that match went? We somehow outdid the best deck in the format. I know, I know, that's just one, so it's a little hard to get more data on this, but to be frequently honest, every other match that I tried to do, either we had opponents that were rage quit, or that I just got blown out, so the deck can be, at various times, a little on the polarizing side. Truth be told, I actually didn't hate playing Turbo Fog as much as I thought I would, but overall, I was actually pretty satisfied with the results. Now, is this deck, again, in its current form, in the best, most optimal way? Obviously not. We definitely are going to want to play with less of the tap lands, but I will not lie, against a aggro match, the tap lands did actually provide for us some really clutch time that we needed to buy in order to get to our other fog effects and eventually get to our approach of the second sun. So definitely never underestimate even the cheap little tap lands these do because they can still time them to make the difference between surviving a turn and ultimately losing. Now, for those of you, however, that want to make this deck even more miserable, stick around for just a second, because you're about to see. If you're still watching my True Fiery friends, give a shout out below in the comments, because you're about to see that we're going to upgrade this deck and make it even more powerful. Now, if you're looking to upgrade the deck in any way, shape, or form and make it even more miserable than before, basically what you're going to see on screen is what I'm going to personally recommend. So the core of the deck basically stays the same, but instead we're going to upgrade some of the things such as temporary lockdown, which can exile every non-land permanent with a mana value of two or less. We're also going to upgrade out of the ossifications and add in leyline binding instead. However, it's also very expensive unless of you modify your mana base, which we'll talk about in just a second. Otherwise, Teferi Hero Dominaria is going to then jump in instead and get rid of the Wanderer. Now, as far as what you're going to see on the land base, what you're definitely going to look at right now and go like, It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. We're going to add in Castle Ardenvale and Otawara, of course, a Basaju. These are pretty much standard, what I would always recommend. Hall of the Storm Giants also can give us another last minute creature if we have to make one work in a pinch. You're going to, of course, get some of the dual lands in here. These are going to be the ones I recommend personally, the spooky lands from Innistrad, only just because our 
game plan is a little bit more of a mid and late game kind of game plan. So we actually don't need a lot of untapped lands in the early part of the game. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot, and you can see it right here, we have a lot of actual tri lands in here but why are we using these tri lands two reasons as i just mentioned earlier leyline binding is a lot more effective when we have each basic land type among the lands we control so of course this is why the tri lands are utilized also what's great about these lands is if you actually don't need them they're also great as cyclers so we can get rid of them when we don't need them in the mid to late game otherwise the sideboard upgrades are going to be as follows the upgrades we'll have is we'll get rid of one copy of filter out we're going to add in now copies of farewell we're also going to have march of otherworldly light another powerful card we can utilize as otherwise more removal we're going to then get rid of our turtles i know i know i love the turtles i like turtles but this is also pretty solid to dream trawler it has a much more effective way of protecting itself with hexproof and also can draw cards and also give us lifelink to stabilize a lot easier but otherwise my only other final thoughts on the deck are again i'm not a fan of turbo fog in any way shape or form but i still want to give the deck a fair chance i play everything that i can within budget means so i can show you out there whatever kind of player you are you there is a definitely a budget deck out there for you in arena and with that as you saw if you are a fan of playing uh, these kinds of decks if you're a fan of making your opponent feel miserable while you slowly just keep dirtling your way to victory play this deck in any way shape or form i can't promise that your opponent's going to stick around for the whole match but when you get to your win con and you get to that victory stopping their combat damage from getting through while you get to your approach of the second sun when you cast it you'll definitely not be disappointed that's all i have for you today thanks again for watching everyone and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life always be sure to burn bright later